Okay, those have to be the color, the color has to be put in there from the beginning process. That's why dye lots vary between furs. Usually with stuff like Monterey Mills, they're pretty much exact from roll to roll to roll. Other things like distinctive fabrics, that's where you get this, what they call a spiky muppet fur. You're not going to get the same color or the same texture out of two separate fur runs. You want to buy everything that you think you're going to need in one run. Otherwise, your color lots are different and you start to run into a problem. My Sweet Tart suit is like that. I made it out of two different furs. They look exactly the same until you get it under stage lights and then you can tell that the head and hand paws are a different color than the body and that looks bad. Especially if you plan on performing on stage. Blues, neon green, any of the big punkier colors, which you notice there's a trend for that, for the otter colored characters nowadays. That Muppet fur is one of your best bets. They make that in turquoise, neon green, hot pink, several different shades of orange. They make a bright red, they make a burgundy red. Charlie Wells DS carries. They carry a myriad of colors in that, but again, would buy whatever you think you're going to need and enough to replace pieces out of the same cut. Otherwise, you may not get the same color when you actually need it. Um, anybody here know Gilmore Lion? Ever met him? He has the Blue Jay for a suit. Kooky the Blue Jay. big, round Blue Jay. He's actually had that problem. He's having to replace parts on Kooky. Kooky is, oh, about what, about a 10-year-old suit? Yeah, he's an old suit. He's been around 10 or 15 years or more. He can no longer find that fur. He's going to have to start from scratch and rebuild the entire thing because he cannot, he no longer find that dial fur. It, it happens, unfortunately. But buy extra, store it away. Let's do something fun here. Let's take Cookie, for example, because Cookie's a really good example. He's a bird, for one. You don't see birds very often. And two, he's brown. He's very big, fat blue jay. Okay, so we have lovely crest on the back of his head. Oh no, he lives in Colorado. He actually has magpies that are too fat to fly up there because they eat off the, they eat off a dumpster bed on the back of a McDonald's. They are too fat to fly anywhere, which I think is hilarious. Oh, I bet you could, but I don't think I'd want to. The magpies are pretty wicked beaks. Okay. He's a nice tubby thing. He's got this big old round belly. He's got round haunches. These big old honking feet. He's got very birdish feet. Hey, Buck, you want to keep it down out there? Hey, I'm guitar right now, okay? Unfortunately, that's one of my local furs, and I'm fixing to go rag on them. <laughs> yes, please. Tell Buck he needs to shut his yap. <laughs> All right. Get nice big character. I'm gonna close the shop, fool. All right. I'm just gonna kind of go over here. That's the wing, that's what actually goes right there. All right, nice big round blue jet. Gilmore is not this large. I guarantee you, he's nobody. Do that fat, you don't need to be in a first suit. <laughs> I'll tell you that right off the bat. You will, you will be dying in sweat after about 10 minutes. Okay, what he's got, but here's your basic human form. This is how big your guy is inside. Okay, shoulder, there's the head. Suddenly you have this character. How are you going to round this out? You have to actually play in what's called a body pod. Have um, you ever seen corporate mascots that have the nice big round bellies that have what's called a body pod? Usually they're built out of just your sheets of foam. Sometimes they're reinforced with boning, like what goes inside wedding dresses. That way they can collapse sideways if they need to. But it holds it out nice and round. One way you can actually do this without buying like wedding dress boning because the stuff is expensive I've used clear refrigerator tubing. You can go to Lowe's, it's just a nice little hard rigid plastic tube, cut it the length you need it, glue it together, use some duct tape to hold it on the inside, and just connect it to the inside of your body pod, basically. With this you're going to have three concentric rings, and build your foam, 
on the outside of the clothes. These are what will hold, hold it together, and when you're done, it'll collapse sideways, and it's very easy to store for travel. Plus, if you need to, you can break these down and make them smaller. But you have your home shape to go ahead and build your character on. You have your wearer inside. This also could be done inflatable, but I'm the wrong person to ask for that because I've never worn one. And from what I hear, inflatables actually have to have a constant air source in order to keep them inflated. So I don't Very recommend hot. actually trying the inflatable route. Very hot. Very hot. And <laughs> if you ever meet Gilmore, get him to tell you the story about, about the kid who found the exhaust fan. In one of his suits, that's a good one. Um, they're very hot. Um, anybody ever seen Oz Kangaroo? Him do oh, his yes. inflatable bit? Yeah. You know what he wears underneath that? A rubber suit. That's exactly right. A rubber suit that's very, very tight to his skin that he actually has to, has to stay constantly attached to a compressor to keep it nice and round. And you know, He doesn't go very far when he's wearing those. He pretty much stays on stage when he does it. It's because he's got a compressor only coming out of his foot going backstage to a compressor. Um, if you're going to be building something like that, you need to actually have what are called pleats, like pleated pants, in built into the stomach so that when it expands, you actually have the extra material to balloon out. And you know, not the, the person to ask about that odd would be better because he actually designs those. Again, but it's, it goes back to the design. You have to actually plan on building that in from the ground up. Do we have any questions so far? No? <laughs> Nothing else left to say. Basically, it's if you need to plan on whatever you want the suit to be, it needs to be in the planning stages. It's a lot harder to add it in on the actual working stages without having planned for this. You need to go ahead and plan on, you know, male or female, what color, what kind of body shape, eyes, mouth, where are you going to see from, how are you going to breathe, one of the worst things you can do, and I've actually done this when I was a new first year, is build a head that looks fantastic and you put it on and your vision's up here. And all you can see is everything from here out. Put your hand right there, where you can't see underneath you. All you can see is your hand in here. You can't see tables, you can't see chairs, you can't see short people in front of you. You definitely can't see kids and I guarantee you can kick them. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you'd like to with some of them. I don't mm -hmm. recommend it. Parents tend to get mad at you, and the last thing you need is a lawsuit. Um, same way with having the opposite, and only being able to look at the ground. Okay, most most first suits you do not have peripheral vision. If you've never first suited before, you're walking like this. You cannot see anything to the side without actually turning your head. Some characters I've actually done, like my Renoir costume I mentioned before. I could see like this. I could see here. And I can see here. I can see nothing in front of me, below, above. I can only see to the sides. So all I had was peripheral vision. Did not take this into account when I designed the suit. <laughs> My mistake. I paid for it. I wore that suit to two cons, and then I closeted it. Mm -mm. I don't recommend it when you're running into stuff. Um, breathing, you want it to have fun and having very good ventilation. There's a reason you see most fursuiters have their characters' mouths open. You need that airflow. You will die without that airflow. You won't be able to keep that head on more than about 10 to 15 minutes before you gotta yank it off. And it's kind of a big first suiting no-no to yank your head off in public. The reason for that is because you can actually traumatize kids. <laughs> <laughs> Not something I recommend doing. You will just scar somebody for life. Oh, in the mascotting world, in the mascotting world, that's considered very unprofessional. Um, anybody's ever met Jimmy Chin, Yippie Coyote? Remember his twilight suit out here? He's actually done it professionally. A lot of people have learned from him. Ask him. He can tell you. He's a, he's a big stickler on the do not pop your head in public. The only reason you should be taking your head out in public is because you have a dire emergency. You're either out of here, you're going to pass out. That's really the only time you need to be popping your top in public. Again, it's discretion, but for the most part, you know, keep the character. Yeah, you might not want to vomit in the no, exactly. I was, I was just, just about no. to say that because see, no, you we're don't in ever, this, ever in this sort of lifestyle. At FC, there, <laughs> there's, there's another thing guy actually with that. that took it off. He yeah, put it right yeah, back on. Went back to first suit. Okay, um, um, I met Jace Husky. Jace Husky actually. No, it wasn't Jace. No, but Jace actually does get drunk in suit. Also, what I do not <laughs> recommend. One, you sweat through. What's that? Sweat the alcohol out through your pores when yeah. you've been drinking in suit. Your suit 
reeks at that point. They're hard to clean. Oh. 